right, so we've uh, seen what happens in a chemical reaction. Uh, and now we're gonna look at the enzymes and what they actually do to help speed up the spontaneous reactions in particular. So for a spontaneous reaction, right, you start off with reactants that have a high energy level. Those reactants are ultimately gonna end up somewhere at a lower energy level. But before they get there, there's going to be, in our curve that we look at, something that looks like this. There's going to be this little rise before the energy drops down, right? And you remember that's called the energy of activation or activation energy. It's this little energy barrier. It's this input that's required for a spontaneous reaction to get started. Okay, so we are talking about spontaneous reactions here. So our question is, you know, how is it that enzymes speed up spontaneous reactions? There's no abbreviation here. Speeding up spontaneous reactions. What is it that they actually do? So if you just read and get a straight definition of it, enzymes lower the activation energy. So if there's a, a certain barrier, so let's say you're trying to push a wheel or a rock okay, and move it forward. If it's on a very flat surface, it's not very difficult to do. If it's on a rough surface, all right, a surface with um, all kind of dips and rises in it, it's going to be a little more difficult. It's going to kind of get stuck. It's going to have to be pushed over those rises. right? So it's like the enzyme not only it flattens things out, but it even gives you a little bit of a downslope. So it's, it's easy for the reaction to occur. So the enzyme is going to then be lowering this activation. So with an enzyme, the amount of activation energy required is going to be very little. So enzymes are going to speed up spontaneous reactions by lowering activation energy. Now, we'll follow this up with a question. How? How do enzymes do that? How do they lower the activation energy? So this is the enzyme here. And these are this is a substrate molecule, let's say here. So we said that there's an active site, right, on an enzyme. The active site is the binding site. It's very unique right, in terms of its size, the shape of it, the charges within it, polar, nonpolar charges, negative, positive charges. All these sorts of things are characteristic that will match up in a very unique and very specific way. Unique and specific for that particular substrate. So again, and remember the term substrate is the reactant. So reactant and substrate now are the, the same thing. Product is still product. So what is it that enzymes do? Well, there's this older um, concept. It's not necessarily wrong, just kind of outdated, doesn't really explain things uh, uh, terribly well as far as how this happens. But the idea is that uh, this is a substrate molecule here, and I have an enzyme that can actually fit. Substrate and enzyme fit together. Okay, So lock and key refers to the specificity, the uniqueness of the binding between the substrate and the enzyme, that this is a very, very unique in, um, type of relationship between the two of them. This enzyme won't bind to any substrate or facilitate any reaction, it has a very specific one. And this substrate molecule requires this enzyme. Other enzymes aren't going to do anything for it. right? And, and the enzyme's not just some generic thing that just speeds up all reactions. They are very specialized for the very specific reaction that they help uh, facilitate. So that's kind of the idea with lock and key. But the idea here is we're asking the question, how? does the activation energy get lowered when they bind together? Well, you put a key into a lock and it 
it moves these little tumblers and then and then it, you can change the, the lock but the key isn't changed right the key's static and in this particular case we have something else happening the enzyme is actually going to change shape in order for these it to bind to the substrate molecule and when that happens it's going to cause the substrate molecule to change shape as well so what's going to happen is the enzyme say is going to say sort of like uh, flex you know itself so I'll draw it like this. So this is kind of representing our enzyme, zigzagging our little alpha helices, our beta sheet structures, all these within it. Okay, these are this is the binding site here, kind of copied over here. But now what's going to happen is you see it, it's changed. It it moved, and when it did, the substrate molecule now it, it's really to fit in here. The bonds. You know, within the molecule are strained. So stress on these bonds. What this is called is the transition state. So enzymes lower the activation energy. Um, through binding substrate in the, what we call it, transition state. So what's the transition state? This is the point where old bonds are breaking, they haven't broken, and new bonds are forming, but they haven't formed yet. So uh, old bonds, or original, we call them old, uh, breaking, New bonds forming. That's the transition. It's a transition. It's something in between. So what's essentially happening here is instead of just static binding and then somehow releasing and then something happened, what happens? The idea is when they bind together, in order to bind together, they only bind if there's a little bit of change in the shape like this. And so what that means is that when the enzyme then releases the substrate molecule, so you can see if, let's do this like this, two of these together, they're held together pretty well. It takes a while to break them. These, the enzyme binds to it. It stresses the bonds. Now it doesn't take hardly anything to just break them apart because there was been some strain or stress put on the connection between these are just two markers but that's the idea even in the chemical bonds within a molecule the change in shape then puts a strain on those bonds so it takes very little energy remember a lot of this is from heat of the environment so it takes very little heat then from the environment in order to push that reaction forward all right now what this is called the transition state, or the, the action, the movement here. Um, because of what we call induced fit. So, the lock and key being this almost very specific but somewhat static idea, we said it isn't quite right. The correct way, or the more updated way, of really explaining what's going on here between an enzyme and its substrate molecule is explained through what's called induced fit. So the fit, the binding of enzyme and substrate, only occurs when they both change shape. The enzyme changes shape and the substrate changes shape while binding together. That creates the transition state. That lowers the activation energy. That speeds up the reaction. So enzymes speed up spontaneous reactions, reactions that can happen on their own. They could, if there's enough heat in the environment, they could overcome this and then just occur. But usually that won't happen. What an enzyme will do is then bind to the substrate under stress, lowering the amount of energy required to move it forward, and so the reaction just moves forward on its own. So terminology, making sure that you know what is induced fit. Induced fit is uh, also here, this alternating conformation. We talked about this also with membranes as well. If you remember, that just means changes shape. 
usually for a protein. So the protein changes shape, the enzyme changes shape. That is the induced fit part of it. It strains the bonds, causing transition state. That lowers the energy, and that's essentially how they speed up reactions. Okay, so uh, this is a graph you've kind of seen before. Just kind of know the point right here at the top. That would be the transition state. So that's a transition state. At the top where this is sort of happening. Right? And, uh, and otherwise, that's it. So um, hopefully that makes sense. And uh, now we're going to move on to regulation of enzymes, or, or things that uh, help the enzyme work better, um, or things that can actually shut it down or, or stop it from working.